talk about how these teams got here once again. Lone Star defeated the University of Minnesota. Then it was the University of Michigan. Then it was Texas State. Then it was the University of Maryland in the Final Four matchup for Texas. They were the number one seed. They are the number one seed still in bracket play. They defeated the LA Gambits. They defeated Blue Mountain Quidditch. And then the Lost Boys Quidditch Club from California. So that sets up the final. Two teams are lined up. We're ready to go. Here on the U.S. Quidditch live stream, Lone Star QC taking on the University of Texas. And here we go. Wow, the incredible speed of number seven from Lone Star. That is Christopher Scholes trying to get Lone Star to first. And he dies. That is definitely the quickest goal we have seen. And we do have our head referee, Alex Shear, who was honored as the referee of the year in our closing ceremonies. Still have the trophy presentation though, so stick around with us following our final here of the U.S. Quidditch World Cup 8 in Rock Hill, South Carolina. <laughs> Cannot say enough about what the staff has done here. Not just the U.S. Quidditch board, but the volunteers as well as Winthrop University with their production for this event. All the teams, the competitiveness, the spectators. So much has gone into this event. You have to thank Rock Hill as well as York County for putting out a great event. Absolutely, and what a beautiful venue it's been. Some per perfect facilities, and uh, couldn't have gone much smoother than this. The referees have conferred. It is a goal. 10 nothing. Lone Star QC. Now that it's been confirmed, I will continue to say that has been the quickest goal going against the University of Texas that we've seen all tournament. And for those who are not familiar with these teams, it is Lone Star QC in the Texas red, white, and blue shorts, and the University of Texas in their home orange. Here's the first opportunity for Texas to try and get on the board. Dancing his way and the quaffle is picked Ooh, off. Scholes grabs it again. Scholes again. Dodging the blunder going in. And he does it. Scholes oh, really is on fire in the beginning Chris of this game. Chris Scholes took that one away after David Acker tried to feed it in front. 20 to nothing, Lone Star. Two goals early for Chris, and it's 20 nothing, Lone Star. 20 to nothing, our score. Contact there going down for Lone Star was number nine, Molly Lensing. And Texas looks as though they may have their first score, but it's going to be a question mark here. We'll wait for the decision. Goal stands. It's on the table, it's on. 20 to 10. Our score. Lone Star the other way. That one tipped in over top the goals. A total of 80 teams started this weekend here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. We're down to our final two. That's right. Schultz looking to go in again, but he cannot take that hit. He's holding on just barely. If he push back even farther, he goes to the pot. Great dodge. Waffle picked up. Number three going in. And Boston Flint. Oh! Acker with a fantastic grab. The save keeps it a one goal game. The referees once again with stoppage for the moment. And the end of the broom came off. I did see one broom snap in our previous final four matchup. That is, that is something that's hard to do. So the quaffle controlled by Texas. Very forward defense set up here from Lone Star. Texas has bludger control as well. And try and clear some space. 
Monroe tried to feed it across. Number 22 gets around to pot and a great jump shot right there. So we're tied at 20 after that goal. Texas for bludger control right now and uh, Bell passing it, seeing what they can do against this defense right here. Feed and one star goes back in front. Another ten points. Some great plays. But uh, the goal is gonna be taken away, I believe. Goal, yes, goal okay. is disallowed, beat before the pass. Ledger play in the middle of the field. It's Texas with the quaffle and being taken down was Kenny Chilton. Now Lone Star chance. That will not oh. the goal and it's off the top of the rim and in. Just along that as well. And no. There's a beat before the goal. Not allowing him his natural motion. Wow. A couple of opportunities. For both sides to take the lead, but goals have been denied. It's been Lone Star really who's had the two missed opportunities. Great block, or great pickup by Bell. See what he can do with this defense. He's just going. Stephen Bell head. runs into a wall. Waffle in the air. Bludger play. Texas great has beat. it. See that wall that was set up that time by. Texas is Halley Pace, number 27. Todd Rowe assessing the situation over here as his team gets into position. We are under the lights here at Carlisle Field, the Manchester Meadows Complex in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Brad Wasnicki and Joey Dennis with you here on the live stream. A, it was a fantastic play by Lone Star pressuring Monroe too much to make a proper pass, and it is really hard to shake Monroe's nerve. The anticipation continues in this one for a champion. Can Texas three-peat? Can Lone Star knock off the top dog for the second time this year? Bludger play. Now the pass. Well, and that great goal pass. denied. He's going for the fast break. Now the speed. Augustine Monroe dodges Stephen Bell. And he has to slow down now. Good job by Lone Star to get back on defense. Oh, absolutely. Well, they were lucky enough that they had to go retrieve the bludgers from their side of the goals, and they had two beaters set up there already, even if there weren't any chasers. Texas with control of the quaffle in the middle of the pitch. Texas also has bludger control. Gonna try and clear some space right up the middle. It's Monroe, working hard. Some great footwork. Some fancy footwork, and now he's knocked down. The quaffle loose, Texas regains it. The shot tipped over the goal. Bell with a great block there. Monroe picking it back up, going in. Monroe fighting his way, just stuffs it in. And that was a hard one lead. And Texas now takes the lead, 30 to 20. How does Lone Star respond after two of their look to be goals have been called back because of a beat prior to the score? You can tell that they weren't too thrilled by those calls, but uh, they're definitely not letting it affect them in too much. Front, tied at 30. That was Matthew Gregoire. And now brooms are down. One moment. I want to continue to thank everyone that has joined us here on the U.S. Quidditch live stream all weekend for World Cup bait here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. 
And the goal is good. Classic. He's got a tight up game again. 30 off. Absolutely. And every time a goal is scored, a new surge of energy comes through the crowd, through the players. It's a fantastic sight here. These two teams are going to keep it as tight as possible. Game time now at seven minutes. Seven minutes gone by, 11 minutes till the seeker floor. In front. And the save, Stephen Bell. Lone Star a chance to take the lead. Oh, he made his head low, but it wouldn't go for Cody Marshall. Now a delayed penalty, I believe, coming up. That was a great screw by Acker. You just look around the pitch and see all the teams in attendance here from World Cup 8. Crowded around the pitch, the stands are full. Exactly the kind of the environment that you want to have for a championship final. And that is a yellow card on 22 for contact below the knees. And now, Lone Star is one man up. Quite possibly going to take this lead back if they can take advantage of it. Oh, they're definitely taking that lead back. That is not a situation you want to be in as University of Texas. This would be a hard shot to screw up. A high percentage look to say the least. Matthew Gregoire, all he has to do is drop it in. It is right on flank there. Joey, I have to ask you right here, what do you think of the higher percentages? This shot going in or the percentages that people said Texas would get back to the final? <laughs> well, uh, considering that they just had to move the quaffle back a little bit, um, it might actually be that University of Texas being back in the finals. Greg Wire. And just and as sure, score, it was as sure as University of Texas is back in the finals, that goal goes through. It was reset, and that was Cody Marshall. After the reset, he put it home. It's 40-30, Lone Star in front. Acker going in hard. Off the Shuffle top of the ring. Goodness. That was some great hustle. And the quaffle goes past the hard boundary. Shot goes off the top of the hoop. Kick is out of play. <laughs> Rooms are down for the moment. And that is a blue card versus off the University of Texas for kicking the quaffle off the field. Card violation for kicking the ball off the Not pitch. the first time we've seen that call. No, it is not, even though it's usually not a very common one you see. We resume play. It's Lone Star with the quapple. Stephen Bell will pass it off. Thrown behind the goal. Loose for a moment. Go right on through. Nice moves. Good. That's some, that's some great footwork right there. Drive, score. That was number 30, Samuel Himowitz. Putting it in for Lone Star, and they now have a two-goal lead. Monroe doing some dancing, looking for some space. 
University of Texas technically with the budget control, even though they left one back by their hoops, just trying to be, trying to do exactly that. Monroe! Take. Wow! What a one-man effort, but you got to give credit to the teammates in front of them creating some space. Oh, absolutely. That's exactly that's exactly why they left that budget behind by their goals, to occupy both of the beaters from Lone Star, allowing them to get in without any pressure. It's back to a one-goal game. Excellent beats over there from the University of Texas. That shot, no good. Shot runs wide. But even though it was a missed shot, he did launch it well enough to where they just regained control. Bell being patient at midfield. Bludger, the pass off. Play Monkey good. in the middle with a beater right now. Good play, and with it right now is number five. That is Jonathan Ruland. And they have DuPont backfield. And, uh, number four kind of skirting around the sides. For Lone Star, number four is Joseph Wright. Right, doing a great job, stayed open. Long pass, right, back to Bell. Bell in front, and the goal was denied. Just barely. Rulin nearly made it a two goal advantage again for Lone Star. Ledger's all over the pitch. 50 to 40 our score. Lone Star leads Texas. The University of Texas Beater is making some space, relieving the pressure. Monroe taken down, got the off oh, off, clock. and Stephen Bell stepping in to knock that one away. And almost had a near goal for Nicholas Marino. down. Topple controlled by Lone Star. And no foul, no foul after that play. No, absolutely not. Uh, I believe they just deemed that to be in a, in a natural motion, not trying to do any harm. And it's Lone Star taking it up the middle. The pass and couldn't complete the connection. Bringing it up for Lone Star was number 16. That was Drew Wasikowski. I believe that might be the second blue card of the game. It's going to be a yellow card. It's going to be a one-man advantage for Texas as yellow card received heading to the penalty box for Lone Star is going to be Rebecca DuPont. And it was it was a yellow card for kicking off pitch, um, but having Dupont in the box isn't something you really want to see if you're home star right now. One goal match. Avoiding the bludger was number 44, Ethan Banner. Behind the goal and actually threw it in. What an excellent shot. Look for a moment that Monroe was going to try and connect with Casey Irwin. Instead, we are tied at 50. It isn't all bad, though, for Lone Star. They do get DuPont back, and they are even as far as power goes. And that one stopped by Monroe. for a fast break, taken down. And Texas can't take the lead, the goal is knocked down. Going
throwing hard into the goal for Texas was number four, Aaron Godesey. going to be a new base brought in for the goal. 50-50 our score. We'll give you an update in a moment on the seeker floor. And Texas takes the lead. Ties this one up at 60. Scoring that one for Lone Star was number 16, Drew Wasikowski. Wasikowski had some fantastic speed and footwork on that play. This is the number one team this year taking on the two time defending World Cup champs. Texas with possession of the quaffle. A little bit of a few threats with the bludgers. Some space up the middle. Monroe feeds it in front, and it's scored by number nine, Audrey Wright. Excellent passing for Texas. Right there with their first goal of this game, I believe. Plenty of others in this tournament, that's for certain. 70 to 60, Texas. Some in Unbelievable positioning for both teams, really. Right back the other way. Lone Star ties this one up at 70. Guess who? Drew Wasikowski. Wasikowski just going in there, using everything he can with that speed and footwork, just flanking all the way around the University of Texas. Quite impressive. But it looks like he wore himself out, and Bell needs to come back in for him. 70-70. Texas with possession of the quaffle. Excellent reset. That was Martin Bermudez who threw it back for the reset. Seems Bermudez get in front and be quite aggressive as point chaser in the defense and offense. The game time is now 15 minutes. 15 minutes on the game time, so three minutes till seeker floor. They, that might quite possibly be the three longest minutes of my life. <laughs> it is so close here, neck and neck, and this snitch is going to mean everything. Bludger control for Texas. Texas has the quaffle as well. Excellent pass. In front! Oh, what a steal, DuPont! DuPont right there with that, that positioning I was talking about. Way to read the plays and the passes. DuPont intercepted the pass. We're still tied. Less than three minutes till the seeker floor. Opportunity for Lone Star to pass in front! Tip right in! And DuPont does the defense at one end, she scores it at the other. Oh, I'm sure she couldn't be happier with those two plays. Wow. Eighty to seventy, Lone Star.
Great job stopping Monroe. Not every team has such an easy time doing that, but Monroe did get into the thick of their team. And it's still bludger control for Texas. Front, a little bit of a collision. The Lone Star keeps it. And Stephen Bell puts it through, but we have a delayed call coming up. The goal will not count. I believe she was beat before pass. Uh, hard to feel it when you're rolling around on the ground. The pitch, the pitch, you hear the crowd roar. He is loved by all. <laughs> even one of the even one of the parents bowing down to do the snitch. He knows. She knows. And Texas says tie this one up at 80. Up at the post out of the base. Good beats going in aggressive this time. Bell quickly the other way, and now we have a stoppage in play. 15 seconds to seeker floor after we resume play right here. 15 seconds till the seeker floor. You know, this is the moment we've all been waiting for. It's actually been a much quicker three minutes than I thought it'd be. I'm feeling a countdown. Soon enough. The snitch entertaining the audience as the referees converse. You can see there are a lot of fans that have surrounded the fence at here at Carlisle Field, those who did not pay their way to get into the World Cup. The game at this point goes right. whoever catches the snitch. The snitch so, must fly. Yeah. Wait for it. Ten. Eight. The countdown is on for the Five, speaker floor. Four, three, two, one. The speakers are out. We're tied at 80. Stu the snitch will now be approached by the seekers. Ooh, an immediate beat on Bell is a great job, but both of these seekers are going incredibly hard right now. The current seeker for Texas is William King, and for Lone Star, looks as though another goal for it is Texas. Thanks to me. <laughs> Snitch with a few taunts, and that's why the crowd loves him. 90 to 80, Texas with the lead. King already switching out. And Bell shot a little bit wild. Lone Star is going to maintain possession of the quaffle. As the pressure continues on the snitch. And the boom is tossed by the snitch. Crowd enjoyed that one, and now the snitch is knocked down. Snitch is still on the loose. 22 from, you, from uh, UT with the awful looking to slow this game down a little bit, but I'd want to. I'd want to get out of snitch range a little bit. So. Evan Carr is the new seeker for Texas, and he is hit by the bludger. Right out of the oh, an excellent catch from 23. Gain UT beater under control, which is so important right now. It's Carr going back to work on the snitch. Reaching around. It's one thing where this could be a pretty good matchup with the length of Carr going up against Stu. Oh, Nearly a snitch catch. Now the Bludger completely misses. All right. Oh, and the most aggressive dive. Doesn't quite pay off for King. 
crowd applauding the effort. 90 to 80 yards to go. <laughs> Snitch getting a little bashful. Texas trying to three-peat. Lone Star trying to show why they've been the number one team this year in the World Cup. And I believe Tates is out seeking now. Oh, and King going for another good dive. Not quite. Battle for the quaffle away from the snitch, and Texas has it. All sorts of pressure coming. Audrey Wright being wrapped up. The snitch going to get a breather while brooms are down. No problem cooling off tonight. <laughs> the flyest snitch the World Cup this year. Stu. A very graceful bow. Back underway. One of the bludgers is loose. Looks as though Texas is going to have bludger control, but everyone has their eyes on the snitch. Stu showing off some athleticism. Nearly a snitch grab. And now, the recently interviewed, <laughs> the referee, for a moment, the snitch thought that the referee was one of the seekers. <laughs> QT's captain is now seeking, uh, probably trying to get a little bit of a size grappling advantage. Uh, Tate's with a... Jo yeah, Joshua Tate's the new seeker for Lone Star. He's got a good reach, and that's definitely something they need. Oh! The snitch with a wave to the crowd. The crowd acknowledges. the sense that nobody here at the Manchester Meadows Complex wants this one to end. I as certainly Lone don't. Star has tied this one up at 90. We're tied at 90. Ooh, Tate's with a near snitch grab. Wave from the crowd. Some people were caught a little by surprise. <laughs> One of the Emerson players starting the wave. Quaffle possession for Texas. Maybe your control. We are tied at 90. King goes down for Texas. Now it's Tate's back to work. He did not avoid the bludger. A good play coming in there from number 79, Charles Crawford. Oh, absolutely. They're trying to take both these seekers out of the game for as long as possible. King, another good effort, but he's shut down. And Tate nearly the snitch grab. <laughs> they actually thought he had it for a second. Everybody is on the edge of their seats right now. Here comes Tate. Tate's trying to avoid the bludger. He cannot. <laughs> Seeker is not getting a lot of opportunities. More like just doing some laps. Good bludger play. For Lone Star, they have number eight, Hope. Michaela in there protecting the snitch. Now the bludger play comes in. Game time, 23 minutes. Game time, 23 minutes. A beautiful dodge of the bludger. Number 17 on UT. Evan Carr working hard against the snitch, and he's thrown down. Carr going right back at it, though. Snitch taking the bludger for Carr. Be careful, both Seekers are there. The Snitch is in trouble. <laughs> and the Snitch grab! This one could be over. It looks as 
though Evan Carr just gave Texas the three-peat. Stu hugging it out, and they think that it might be. The referees will talk it over, but this one looks to be done. Does Texas have their third straight World Cup championship? We will wait to confirm. The Longhorns being thrown up by the audience. That's it! That's it. Texas rushes the field and gets their third straight World Cup championship. They win World Cup 8 here in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Give a lot of credit to the Lone Star QC. They were right there. It all came down to the snitch snatch. Oh, absolutely. Neck and neck. And that's why the score is a difference of 30. It was all the snitch that game. And wow, what an incredible game it was. Texas celebrates. Oh, what a hard one celebration it is. And I think there might be tears out there for UT. What a weekend it has been here in Rock Hill, South Carolina.